Hello everybody, my name is Adrian Iliasiu and I'm an engineer with the Cisco DevNet team. So in this part of the course, we're going to go to the continuing developing our first application using the REST API. So in the first part of this, we've seen what, temp, what uh, libraries we were planning on using. So we, we went over the request library, tabulate, and the click library. And then we had a look at the class that we have uh, readily available for you to log in, to do get requests, and also post requests. So next, we're going to start going into the functions that are going to accomplish uh, what we were set uh, at the beginning. So to get a device, a list of the devices that are part of the fabric, to get a list of the templates, to see which devices are attached to which template, and also to uh, attach templates to specific devices and to detach them. So we're going to try to cover as much as we can in this part of the course. So going back to the code, we got to this part where we actually instantiate an instance of the REST API lib class. We call it SD1P, and we pass in three parameters, right? The ones that were required, the SD1 IP, SD1 username, as the SD1 password. If you remember at the top of the script, we actually were importing this from the environment variables, right? So we were having the user input this, the IP of the vManage instance, the username and the password as environment variables, and then we load them up and we pass them in this instance of the REST API lib class. So the SD1P by at this point should be an instantiation of our class that's logged in, authenticated, and ready to do get and post calls. Next, we get to our click group. So this is where we start using the click library. So we define our first and only application in this case. We call it CLI. And we just have one line text here helping the user to know what actually this CLI application is supposed to do. We have it as command line tool for deploying templates to Cisco SD-WAN. Um, next, we start adding commands to that CLI. So we have the CLI defined, we call it CLI, but now we're going to add commands. We will add, by the end of this course, five commands to this. The first one is the device list. So the nice way in click is that you define your CLI.command, and then you define the function, and every time you call that, uh, command, you actually have access to the device list function in this case. We start up with a comment here, giving information to the user what this specific function is supposed to do. So in our case, we have retrieve and return network device list mentioned here, returns information about each device. And the example command is right here on how the user can actually run this and get a, a list of devices that are part of the fabric. At the same time, we echo back to the console um, retrieving the devices so that the user knows that, yes, we started retrieving the devices. And then we start building our code here. So the response variable within this specific function contains the get request response for the endpoint device. So here, what happens is we're going to use the instance of the restlib API class that we defined above. And I was saying that this will be available here for us. We're already authenticated at this point, and we're ready to do, in this case, get request calls. We're going to use the get request function from that uh, instance of the class. And with that output, we're going to load it as a JSON and store it in the response variable right here. So the response variable at this point will have, will contain a JSON format 
of the get device list uh, of the device uh, endpoint. So the endpoint here, if you remember, this is actually the mount point variable. Mount point. And what actually happens in the back end is that the endpoint gets built as HTTPS, colon, colon. In our case, sandbox sdwen.cisco.com 8443 slash data service slash uh, device. So we've seen this mount point resource or endpoint, however you want to call it, in several locations so far throughout our course, right? We've seen it in the Swagger documentation part, we've seen it in the Postman, and here we actually build it in Python so that we can actually get the list of devices that are part of the fabric in a JSON format. So, the response, like I said, contains all the JSON file that we've, uh, we're accustomed to now, we know. And then what I'm doing next is that I'm extracting from my response that's in JSON format, I'm extracting just the data portion of it. And I'm storing it in my items variable. So the data is actually part, a subset of my whole um, JSON return from the API, and I'm extracting it, and I'm storing it in the items variable. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to iterate over that items variable, and I'm going to extract each one of them and uh, specific fields from the, from the JSON output. So the information that I'm going to extract from the data is actually the host name, the device type, the device ID, the system IP, the site ID, the version and the device model. So these are from that large amount of information that was stored in the, in the JSON output. I'm just going to extract this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fields, and I'm going to display them in a list. Next, I'm creating here an empty list called table. And for each item in items, so for each item, which would mean vManage is an item, vSmart is an item, vBond, and all the v edges, they're all items in this. So for each one of those items, I'm going to store the host name, the device type, the UID into a TR variable. And then I'm going to use the append method available in my list to actually append my, all my items, the host name, the device type for each device in the fabric to that list. Next, I have a try, catch, except here um, in which I'm echoing back to the user. And here is where I'm using the tabulate, the pretty printing that we're talking about. So the table, variable contains my information, but here with the tabulate function, with the tabulate library, I'm using it to actually display it in a nice format. And we'll see in a second what that means. And then I'm using the fancy grid uh, format for my table. And in case something happens, I have an except here that will catch the error and display a message. In this case, actually we'll try a different format of the table. Perfect. So next, let's see and let's see it in action, right? So I have here my virtual environment is started. Like I was saying, I have installed my libraries in here and I believe I'm in the right directory. Let me just do a directory. Okay, yes. So if I do a Python sdwen.py device list. I see here 
the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 fields that I was looking for. Right, so I have my host name, the device type, the device ID, system IP, site ID, version, and device model. So these are the, the headers that I was looking for and the table that I stored them in, I was iterating over each one of them, extracting the data and displaying it here. So I have the vManage, vSmart, vBond, and then I have the, the fourth one should be at the bottom, the fourth vEdge here. So I have the device IDs for all of them, the system IPs displayed, the site IDs, and the version of the code that's running in there and the device model. So this is the same information that you see in the graphical user interface, right? We've seen in there under configuration devices and under monitor network. It's pretty much similar, but this is organized a bit differently, is obtained in the same manner, but displayed in a different version, uh, in, in a different way. And let's have a look. There's the VH4, like I was saying, either system IP, site IDs. Uh, so it looks like it works, right? Our device list function works as intended. We are retrieving a list of devices. We're using these headers to display the information. Um, and the empty table gets populated one item at a time with the information that we want. And that's pretty much it for the device list. Next, very similarly to that, we got a template list function, which will also have a command in the CLI. So similarly to what we've done with the device list, template list starts with a small couple of lines of text to let the user know what this actual uh, function is supposed to accomplish. And then an example of how to use it. Right, as the one up UI template list, and it's going to return. It should return to you a list of all the configuration templates that are available on this vManage uh, instance. Same thing. We echo back to the user to the console retrieving the templates available. Next, in the response variable, we store. We go for a different endpoint. So if you remember the get devices the get device, the device list um, above was hitting a different endpoint, was just slash device. In this case, we go to slash template slash device. We hit a different endpoint to get different data. It's still a get request call, so we still use the get request function that's available in our instance of the uh, REST API lib, which we call SD1P, right? So that instance, we use, again, the get request. We load up the output as JSON, and we store it in the response variable right here. From the response, again, in items, we store just the data. That's what we're interested in, the data. And then the headers that we're going to display in this case are template name, device type, template ID, attached devices, and then template version. And then template version, yes. Same like the uh, device list, we create an empty table. We iterate through all the items one at a time that we stored here. We extract the template name, device type, template ID, and then we append them all to the table. And then we echo back with the click um, library with the echo function of the click library. We tabulate, we do the fancy grid again, and we display it uh, out to the user. So very similar as the device list. Let's give it a try and see if it works. We go back here. We can do template list. List. And here we go. We can see the template name, the template name, VH Basic template, 
the device type is a VH cloud, the template ID, and also we see here that we have one attached device to this template, and the template version is 15. So in this case, let's have a look at vManage and have a look at the templates just to make sure configuration if we go templates we can compare the information that we obtained through the uh, through our application to the one displayed in the graphical user interface so we see here uh, the name is the same and we see the feature template uh, the version the, it's a VH cloud uh, it's a type feature there's one device attached and it is in sync so very similar to what we obtain us, we have a VH Cloud, we have the name and the attached devices and also the version. So if we go here and we do a view, we can see details of the template. It's basically the same information displayed in the graphical user interface as what we've accomplished here with our Python script. So next, Let's see, let's have a look what devices are attached to this template, right? So we have attached devices we see on that is here. And the third thing that we wanted to accomplish with our script is we wanted to see which devices are attached to a specific template. So, so far we've got a device list of all the devices that are part of the fabric. We've got a template list, a configuration template list. Next, let's see in the third step what devices are attached to a specific template. So for that, we're gonna go and of course we're gonna define one new function. We're gonna call it attached devices in this case. It's gonna be also a CLI command. And um, this specific function compared to the ones we've seen above actually takes one option. Right? So it takes the template ID. We have here help for the user, name of the template you wish to retrieve information for. And we pass it from the user to the function as a parameter to the attached devices function. Similarly to the other two, we have here a couple of lines of text to show the user how to use the command and also what it's supposed to do. The URL, this would be our endpoint, it's template, device, config, attached, and we get the first option. The response, similarly to before, it's a JSON load, it's a get request from this URL, it gets passed here as a resource. We use the same get request function available with SD-WAN with our instance of the REST API lib class. And then similarly, we load it as a JSON, the response items contains the data. And in this case, the headers will be the host name, device IP, site ID, host ID, and host type. These are the five elements from that JSON that's being returned that I'm interested in extracting. Same logic, build an empty list, iterate one item at a time through the list, extract the data that I'm interested in, append it to the empty list, and then echo it back to the user. And display it as a fancy grid, if not possible, fancy grid, do a regular grid. So let's see now, have a look how it works. In our git bash interface here. So if I do again Python, sdun.py, let's do help, just to show you. So here we see the help option displayed, right? It's a command line tool for deploying. So this is the CLI, the main, uh, the main help description for the application itself. Um, we have the commands that are available attached, detached, uh, device list, and device template. We've already seen these two. 
Next, let's have a look at the attached devices option, which we just described. So if I go and attached devices, and let's have a look at this, at the help. So retrieve and return devices associated to a template, an example of how to run the command. We see here sdwan.py attached devices and we pass in the template ID. The options, we see them there and the help. So let's pass in the template ID. We have only one, so it's going to be a bit easier to pass in this template ID. Copy and then paste. So, and there we go. We got our information that we were interested in. We see in this case VH4 with the device IP of 4.4.4.63 with a site ID of 500 is the device that's associated to this specific template right here with that ID. It's a V edge, and we also wanted to display the host ID of that V edge device, right? So one, two, three, four, the five headers that we were looking for, they're all nicely displayed um, in our CLI application. So let's just double check this information and make sure that if we click here, devices attached, indeed, we see the same chassis number, the same host name, site ID. So it's the same information that is displayed in the graphical interface. We got access to it over the API, and we displayed it in a way that we wanted here uh, with the fancy grid using the, CL, the, the click library. Same information obtained in, the, in a programmatic fashion. Um, Perfect, so I think we've covered enough for this lesson. Just a recap, we went over and we've seen an instance, how to instantiate our REST lib API class that we defined at the top, providing the three functions, login, get request, and post request. So we had an instance of that class that we used throughout all the three functions to build on top of, that gave us uh, the authentication already done and the two functions, the get request and post request ready for us so that we could hit different mount points or resources in the device list, get call that we did, template list, and also the attached devices. So, so far, all of these three functions, we did only get calls. In the next two, in the next section, we'll use the attached and detached, and we'll see, we'll start doing post calls in our script and how we pass the payload and where do we find that payload. Thank you very much for, for watching this. I hope it has been um, helpful for you, and uh, thanks for watching.